got a roof leak coming from a drain over here and um, <laughs> it would appear that whoever put the bucket there to catch the drips failed to look up to see where they were actually dripping from. I can tell you exactly where it's dripping. Here, let me go turn the lights on. You see where the water is dripping off the bottom of that pipe? It's actually coming from the seams right above that and it's dripping straight down there. So why the bucket is over there, I don't know. But anyway, I'm not gonna worry about that. And that's where the, uh, the roof deck overlaps. And if you follow those back, they go right to that drain there. Now this is not a new leak. This was leaking two years ago and I resealed underneath the membrane, which is under the compression ring. Obviously the product that I used is not holding up. It's leaking again in full fury. And so I have to go and do it again. However, rather than just apply new sealant, I'm gonna have to treat this as more of a new installation. I think that's the only way to defeat this thing once and for all. Yippee ki -yay. Buckle up for safety as I give you a day in the life of online. No, not online. I'm actually there. Facilities maintenance. This is the worst of the drains right here and uh, water is obviously getting in underneath the membrane and traveling along the, uh, the, the channels in the roof deck to about here and dripping through. The solution is uh, pretty straightforward. And like I said, I repaired this two years ago, but what I didn't do is actually treat it like a new installation. I forced some sealant into the area that I knew was leaking, which is underneath the membrane here. So I forced the sealant in under here, but that has obviously let go. So I took this compression ring off and force new sealant underneath there, put the compression ring back on. To properly repair this, I need to treat it like a new installation and expose the whole underside of that area and make sure it's clean. I'm sure there's gonna be rust underneath there because it's been leaking, so it's metal and it's probably rusted. So I think this is probably the best way to go about it. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to do that one over there because it's dripping as well, although not nearly as fast as this one uh, behind me. If it's not one thing, it's another with this roof. I think maybe I'll go get the shovel and scoop some of this water away. And if the rain holds off, and it's supposed to be nice tomorrow, I won't have any more collected water here, which I need to get out of there to do this. With the water cleared off of here, um, this actually gives you a really good visual of what it is that I'm going to do because you can see the original flashing piece right there. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing is cutting along that same line and uh, removing that entire piece then cleaning up the drain surface, the top flat surface of the drain underneath that, then uh, reapplying a whole tube of brand new butyl sealant, put the membrane back down, clamp that in place, seam seal what I've cut out. Because the only way to properly get to the actual point where it's leaking and seal it is to essentially dismantle this and redo it as if it was a new installation. Band-Aid repairs don't work, at least not in the long term. I got two years out of this one. So in order to do this, I need to uh, get some more seam sealing tape, 
and I have two Roof Mart locations pretty much equidistant from where I'm standing right now. One in Surrey, one in Abbotsford. One's 35 minutes away, one's 33 minutes away. 22 kilometers versus 24 kilometers. Really, it comes down to where would I prefer to drive. It's about 20 lights to go through to get to the Surrey location, or I can take back roads and maybe hit three lights going to the Abbotsford location. So in this case, Abbotsford wins. Considering I have to drag everything up and down the ladder through the hatch over there, I think this is one of those jobs that probably takes almost as long to uh, gather and bring my materials up here as it does to do the actual work itself. Let's find out. Since the source of this water right now is coming from the air conditioner condensate drip line, I've shut the AC off so I don't keep having these recurring puddles. I need it to dry out and then stay dry. If you look at the rust underneath here, that is uh, sure evidence that water has been getting through. A couple of things. I've been very careful not to drop any nuts or washers down the drain because if that happens, they're gone. And here's another thing that I've noticed now that I've I made this cut here. There's a little pinhole leak right there, a little pinhole in the rubber. And just over time, that very small hole, look how much rust it's created underneath here. So. Now my plan is to peel this back and see where the failure has happened. Or I should say other failures. Well, the fact that I can see rust underneath there tells me that water has been getting through. Yeah, so here are a couple of failure points, right? You can see all this here. Water has been getting through. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, this, ori this is original sealant here. There's not much of it left. And I can tell by looking at it, that it is butyl. So that's the same stuff that I am using now. So. Yeah, in theory, redoing this should give us another 20 years on a roof that we probably will be changing in about five. The surface of that isn't too bad, actually. I can clean that up quite well. I actually thought I'd have to do more cleanup around here than I thought, but it's not too bad. It's not too rusty, which is great. Just picking off some of this old hardened sealant now so that I can get a good bond with the new.
Now the goal when tightening it up is to not tighten it so tight that I squeeze all the sealant that was in there out. But I do want to tighten it up enough to make sure I get good squish happening all the way around. Now granted, this is coming out above the membrane and so that's not, uh, that's not where our true seal is. But I'm sealing up everything uh, just to be on the safe side. I don't want water passing through underneath this compression ring and rusting it the way it was previously rusted. And uh, also by seeing how the sealant is squishing out here evenly, that gives me a good indication that I have even tension on the compression ring and that the sealant is probably squeezing out exactly the same underneath it. So the final step to button this up is just to seam seal the edges that I cut. So I'll clean that up, I'll seam seal those edges, and then this one will be done. Then I can move on to the next one. It's very important that you take the time to clean the old rubber membrane, just to make sure that any patching sticks as best as it possibly can. Growing. As you saw, we are completely resealed with new butyl sealant uh, at the actual drain opening. And where I cut the membrane and peeled it back, and I don't know why, I cut three sides. I started cutting the fourth side, but I, and I sealed it anyway, just because I may have cut all the way through in places. I, I didn't need to. I only needed to cut three sides to open that up. And if you noticed, you might have seen me tuck an extra little piece under this corner here. You can kind of see the, the dent of it. Uh, I just took a piece of this stuff and folded it over and made a little pad and slipped it underneath there. And that's because that galvanized tin flashing that was underneath here is what caused that little pinhole in here uh, by just be having a sharp edge. And then every time we service this machine and you walk up to it you're literally stepping on that spot even though it's covered with rocks you're still stepping on it and uh, so I put that little piece of pad underneath there just to protect that so that will not happen again well that is what it takes to repair a roof drain with an EPDM flat roof uh, if you're interested in the products that I used I used a butyl sealant that's important because that will bond to anything and it's, uh, it'll ooze out where needed and all the rest of that. I used a weathered membrane cleaner for uh, preparing the surface of the old membrane. I used a different cleaner to just take the worst of it off, but prior to actually sticking anything down, I had to use a weathered membrane cleaner, and that will ensure that you get a very good uh, adhesion. And the other thing I used was that Eternabond uh, roof repair tape. Uh, you've seen it before, I've used it previously, and for an application like this, it's ideal, really. It sticks to everything. You can use it on EDPM, TPO, uh, modified bitumen, all metals, tile, stone, brick, concrete, wood, and it has a 15-year limited warranty. I don't know how limited that is. Those are the products that I used. Other than that, it was just a little bit of technique, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of labor, but not much, really. 
So, that is how you repair a roof drain. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I did. Have a great day. See you next time.